Hello and welcome. Apologies that I'm a little bit late this morning. I did say I'd be here about 10 o'clock. Um, that's because my uh, iPad and uh, phone um, decided to have some pretty big updates and things. So yeah, that is the reason why I'm a little bit late today, um, as opposed to kind of the uh, you know time that I wanted to, to be here. Um, how are you all doing? on this uh, Thursday, I think it's Thursday, Thursday morning. Uh, we're gonna crack on uh, with this Thunderhawk um, gunship build. I uh, hope you're enjoying all the content so far. Uh, the Goff Rocker uh, review uh, will be later today. So quite soon after this, um, oops, I just dropped him. Uh, quite soon after this uh, live stream, today uh, so I just wanted to wow okay this is quite annoying uh, yeah no worries um, apologies that that has taken quite some time to to get to everyone um, and then tomorrow is going to be something different something a little bit different uh, yeah there he is there's the goth rocker uh, so, yeah, he'll be he'll be later on today, um, and then I'll do another live stream tomorrow morning. I've already decided. Uh, I think these are working out quite well. Uh, right, let's get cracking with the old um, preparing of uh, parts and things. I've got my lamp on the brightest setting it possibly can be. I mean, it's quite sunny today uh, in Norfolk, which is nice, um, but. Uh, yeah, every time I switch the lamp on now, I'm kind of reminded that I need to get a, a brighter uh, lamp. Um, just above me here, near my paints, I've, I've reorganised the shelves and things. So I'm kind of, I've got long arms. I'm, in, I'm still in arm's reach of, of all the contrast paints now, of, uh, of the paints, which, um, you know, I wanted to be. I wanted the paints closer so that, um, and then when I get the sm slightly smaller, uh, cutting mat I can paint on there and then everything's in arm's reach paint brushes the paints um, things like that so uh, it all means that 2023 will be super's painting year um, I'll try and paint as much as I can uh, at least spray it so yeah uh, thank you for joining me again uh, today uh, if you're off now from work for Christmas or if you've just got a day off that must be quite nice. Uh, I'm off for Christmas now, so um, usually I work a lot over Christmas, uh, but this year uh, having a bit of a break. Um, so I am choosing to spend it uh, building this Thunderhawk and sharing it with, with everyone. Um, you know, because not everyone can get a Thunderhawk. I appreciate that. and. Likewise, not everybody would want a Thunderhawk. Um, so. But yet this is, uh, if you're new to these streams and this, this channel, this is my second Thunderhawk. Um, I did not buy this one. Uh, Kriegsman donated it to the channel. Um, uh, as part of the support and kind of all of this content and guide and things is, is because of him, you know. Uh, I mean, my my end plan was to uh, have two Thunderhawks eventually, um, but uh, if I'm honest with you, it would have been pretty low on my on my list of uh, models to pick up. Um, I'd much rather get new models that I've never had before. Uh, than um, sort of previous ones that I've experienced. <clears throat> Just because I like the new experiences of different kits. It's one of the reasons why I got the Sabre and the Morbus. Morbius time, you know. Wow. 
uh, but this kit is a nice one uh, from what I can remember sort of five six years ago I think it was like 2016 2017 came out I have to have a look at my unboxing my original unboxing but yeah I hope everyone's well I hope you're all warm and safe and well fed uh, uh, what paint scheme do you plan for it? Um, just black. Uh, I I don't know whether I'll go for consoles. Um, I did have a dream once where I picked up a uh, e either Thunderhawk or Stormbird and just you know painted it gold <laughs> for custodies. I don't know why, but um, you know I'm, I'm sure custodies could fit in them, uh, but they have their Orion drop ships, uh, which are, are more than capable. Um, I don't know, there's just something about having a gold Thunderhawk or gold Stormbird, um, I guess. But yeah, it'll be black, uh, like the, like the, I say black consoles, Dark Angels, I don't know, I'm still, I mean, my ha Horus Heresy army is Dark Angels, um, but my sort of 40k armies black consoles so maybe some gold highlights in places i haven't really done that on any of the space marine vehicles other than the um the knights which aren't space marine vehicles i know but uh just to tie it in and even though i'm i'm collecting sort of six legions uh I'm, I'm, there's no plan on a Thunderhawk, Thunderhawk per legion, no way. Uh, these two Thunderhawks are for just this Space Moon chapter or legion. I mean, if I paint it black, then I can kind of use it for the uh, Dark Angels and Raven Guard. Maybe Iron Hands, but I'm not collecting Iron Hands. So. Uh, although the the new helmets look good, I like the look of those. Uh, yeah, so it's a bit of a sort of calm, subdued live stream, really. Just uh, preparing these parts for the Thunderhawk. Uh, yeah, this is very true. Yeah, this is very true. Hello, uh, Kriegsman, how are you doing? Um, for some reason, I think the, the stream isn't the best quality at the moment. Uh, and that is because there's a few things um, downloading in the background, some updates and things. So I do apologise. It, it will clear up in the next sort of hour or so. Um, I'm a little bit late because I've had to download some updates for the uh, phone and the, the iPad. So um, that's that's why it's taken me so long to get to this point. Um, but hopefully you can hear my voice quite well. Um, yeah, let's just change that quality to that. Data save. Good, thank you. Thank you for the feedback, guys, as well. And thank you for all the questions. Um, you know, this is one of these streams where you don't necessarily need to watch it. You can just sort of do things in the background and listen. So if you're building a Thunderhawk, I know someone was painting a Minotaur's Thunderhawk yesterday, which is quite cool. Um, I did ask him to put pictures in the Discord, but... Yeah, they didn't really surface, but um, yeah, so if you're building a big project or painting anything, um, it might be nice just to have my voice in the background. It's not too jarring, and I do talk a lot. Um, I find it, uh, when I'm hobbying myself, I find it just nice to, to listen to someone that's also hobbying rather than putting a Netflix series on or something where, where I have to kind of get engaged or I feel like I'm missing out on the, the picture and sound as opposed to putting it on the telly and things. So. 
audiobooks are good as well. Um, you know, uh, I'll be, I will be um, playing. I don't know if it's if it's coming today. Uh, let me just have a little look. dispatched I don't know um, I'll have to have a look a different way um, let's try this so that was all right, it doesn't look like it's dispatched, but um, my plan is to live stream uh, Final Fantasy Crisis Core. I, I played it a little bit on the PSP back in the day when it came out. When, when did that come out? Like 2012 or so? So a good decade or decade ago. Um, I think it was back then. But uh, yeah, I plan to do that. But if it doesn't arrive today, um, then... I wouldn't mind live streaming The Witcher, uh, the the next gen update on the on the PlayStation. Uh, I've had a toggle with the settings on the Xbox, and I have to say the increased priority frame rate um, on the Xbox looks way better. It's just clearer and sharper and more fluid than um, the ray tracing mode. Uh, it might just be me, but I I don't even know if I mean, I guess I'm playing the latest version of it, but it only, it seems like it's 50 something gigs and I'm sure the PlayStation one is like a hundred gigs. So I'll have to look into that a bit further. Um, but I have updated the PlayStation version. Um, Uh, early streams fit your day. That's good to hear. Good morning, Sebastian. How are you doing? Um, tempted to get your Warlord boxes out, but you've got exactly Kriegsman. Yeah, for you, you've you've got commissions and things, so it's um, you know, maybe maybe it's it's a good idea to to get some of the commission work done first, and then uh, the Warlord. Or or you could do the Warlord and stuff now, and then commissions later it's, I, I know I always feel a bit more productive in the morning though um, yeah I mean I mean I feel more um, sort of motivated to be doing this right now <clears throat> over the next few hours than say like starting this at nine ten o'clock at night when I want to kind of slow down for the day and chill um, play a game watch a movie read a book Listen to some really good music on the speakers, something like that. Um, yeah, I haven't really got uh, some time. I've got the time to. So I'm going off on one. Um, yeah, I, I want to uh, clean all of these parts today. Uh, maybe, maybe start filing them, cleaning them, just to go through that with everyone. Yes, I know this is a pain. You know, cleaning these resin parts, but plastic would take longer. This is uh, proven with those dreadnoughts that uh, they've now got. It's quicker for me to completely build and clean up a resin Leviathan or uh, Contemptor than it is a, the plastic one. Um, I don't mean to open that. I cannot first thing, but 
The only thing that really gets me with these resin kits is the amount of pressure, pain that it puts on your finger. This this index finger more than anything, really. <clears throat> um, you're buying a Warlord Titan too soon. Uh, do you have any tips for building it? Uh, yeah, loads of tips. Um, I, I do want to, to do a Warlord Titan kind of build guide. Uh, it will... It will be members only chat. I think everyone can view it, but members only chat. Um, I've got my warlord right here, uh, Python X. Um, there's there's the warlord Titan. I've got the uh, demonic upgrade pack there as well. Um, uh, tips: take your time. Um, mine took over a year. To, to build and to paint because I, I decided to um, build uh, I decided to paint every part separately like I don't know whether you want to do that but um, it just I just know that every piece is painted you know and there's no hidden places that aren't uh, it, it's an absolute pain to put together once it's fully painted though uh, but um, with the second one, when I do the build guide, I'll build the skeleton of it first and spray that. Um, but I'll still uh, have a lot of sub-assemblies in terms of the armor plates and things. So, yeah, stay tuned to the channel. I mean, you say you're going to buy a Warlord Titan soon. Uh, I, I don't know when my Warlord Titan build guide will, will happen. Um, for me, I'd like to have like a week off work or something to, to dedicate it. Uh, you know, because I, I do work for a living. Um, whereas, uh, you know, the reason why I'm doing this now is because I have got a bit of time off work, um, so I'm able to. Uh, and I, I just don't think I could do a Ward or Titan build guide justice if I just stuck to the regular, like, Wednesday and Saturday live streams, because some of the Wednesday ones, I'm so tired from working half the week, uh, and likewise the Saturday ones, um, yeah, I do things on a Sunday as well, so it's, uh, it's yeah, it's a bit of a juggle, I think, but I'm happy to do it, I'm happy to um, do a guide, but I think you'll probably get your Warlord before, um, you're more than welcome to sort of join the Discord, uh, it's all free, uh, and there's quite a few of us that have built Titans there. Um, and you can always post a question, post pictures. The secret is not to rush it, um, especially the pose and things. Use magnets, use a lot of magnets everywhere if you can. Um, I've had mine for what, almost six years and it's still standing and there's no rods in it, so you know, it's fine. And the only parts that I used epoxy resin for were the ankles, the knees and the hips. They're the only three parts. Um, I think sometimes people can go a bit over overboard. Um, I mean, pinning and rodding big models like that is good if you're planning to, like, use the model all the time and move it around because it's great for sort of uh, negating uh, vibrations but for shock impacts it's worse because um, you'll end up uh, snapping parts of the plastic where it wouldn't whereas if you're only gluing like at the joints then it's going to snap at the weakest point which would be the joints and it's easier to repair at a joint than it is um, like if a thigh is sheared off because the rod and the glue that you've used between the, the, the joints has just made that uh, unbreakable um, point. It's made it stronger than the rest of the resin itself. It's, yeah, it's, um, that's what I found anyway. I found out that people that... I, I've seen people that have dropped their warhounds that they pinned and it's shattered the resin. So, But don't let that, you know, frighten you. Um, 
it's it's very extreme that that would happen i've never dropped any of the titans they've never fallen off a shelf i've got the reaver very high up on a shelf and that's still fine so um <laughs> yeah good old little boglins uh krieg yeah i've got the big boglin that you put your hand in and use it as a puppet uh i, I can't find it though the plastic is still holding up um those were the days you know with physical toys not not any of this digital stuff <laughs> Uh, how much does a fully built Warlord Titan actually weigh? A uh, couple of kilograms. Um, I haven't ever put it on my scales. I suppose I should. I need to replace the battery in my scales. But um, yeah, it, it does weigh a fair amount. Um, it's, I'd say the heaviest. I probably would say it's the heaviest out of all the minis. Mm, probably heavier than the Stormbird, just. Uh, the Thunderhawk's fine, you can carry that with one hand, it's not It's not that heavy. Because uh, it's hollow, whereas the Warlord, the only hollow part is like the central body bit, everything else is thick. <laughs> um, my brother had one where you could move the eyes and mouth with your hand, yeah that's the one, Kriegsman, yeah that's the one, yeah. <laughs> yeah people struggle to to buy a war warlord titan kriegsman uh, it's to, to spend six thousand pound on a emperor titan would be impossible for most people maybe if they sold it in kind of parts like they used to sell things in, in parts. Uh, I mean, they still kind of do for the um, Warlord, like buy a head separate and things like that. This is why I think the Warmaster, they're going to have to do that. Um, oh, Papa bless. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think they'll do that. Like with the Warmaster, they'll probably sell like the legs separately for two thousand pound or something, or maybe fifteen hundred. No matter the cost, I'd get one, definitely. Only one though. I wouldn't. I would never get two Warmasters. Even if um like the the melee weapons and things were kind of forced upon you or, or maybe the top carapace you could only have the gatling or the or the missile launcher thing i would find a way to modify it just to you know get away with only having one and plus it get it gets to a point where you know pe people already say on my titan videos and things about the warlord titan oh you could... my first car was cheaper well yeah okay wow um but when you have quite a few titans it gets to the point of yeah that's actually a car now <laughs> um you know but the thing is like these don't need servicing and these you don't need to continually like get an mot or a service or new parts or insurance like that there once you buy them that's it and they're either going to stay the same but typically they don't stay the same value typically they always go up in value like, even if you just build it and you don't even paint it like I, I have, um, you've increased its, its value because of the amount of time that it takes uh, to, to hobby on them. Uh, like this uh, Thunderhawk, I mean, with the Forge World price increase earlier in the year, and most likely there'll be one next year, uh, you know, Thunderhawk, when I first bought this one, was what? 475 and they're now almost 600 so without me even building it it's it's gone up um that's a little bit wonky isn't it i thought i wouldn't have to get the hairdryer out for this model <laughs> give the thunderhawk a bit of a heat heat treatment 
and that's my preferred method. You don't need an air gun, uh, you know, hot air, fan, jet, whatever you call it. And I find uh, warm water just gets cold too quick. So especially in this weather, no, depends how cold your house is. Um, okay, that's that. I'm, I'm purposely leaving these till last because they're an absolute pain to get in all those vents. They, they, they will take the longest <laughs> out of many things. Uh, this piece is probably will as well. Look, you can see the uh, flash look there. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, what's your favourite Space Moon chapter? Yours is Death Watch. Um, that's a really, really good question. I, well, traitor, traitor chapter. I'd probably say it's Death Guard. That's my favourite. Um, Loyalist. Uh, that's that's harder to answer. <laughs> Favourite loyalist. Um, it's it's a difficult one because I like the characters in a few of the chapters. Like I like some of the characters in Imperial Fists, some of them in Ultramarines, um, a couple of them in Blood Angels. And maybe a few in Salamanders. I don't know, like loyalist loyalist chapters. It's difficult, difficult to say. Um, Hello Iron Bomb, how are you doing? I said we'd catch up, didn't didn't I? Nice of you to join. Uh, I think you were watching the last live stream a little bit, uh, you know, after it after it finished. Um, so I'm glad you could join for this one. Um, there'll be another one tomorrow on Friday, uh, about this time, about ten ten o'clock, ten thirty for for a few hours. Um, Oh yeah, probably Dark Angels actually, thinking about it. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a good, a good shout. Gravis armor does look pretty good. Well, not on um, the aggressors, clearly, and on the pregnant captain. But on most of the other things, yeah, it looks great. And then when we'll get some kind of like Terminator type armor for Primaris, maybe. Who knows? I'm actually more interested to, to see the new Tyranids next year and new box set. I think quite a few people were happy with the Cadian release because it's sort of an upgrade to Gene Stealer Cults. You know, could you head swap a few of these Cadians um, for Gene Stealer Cult um, minis? Well, it is nice to see you all here today again. 
um, in this sort of very relaxed live stream. I'm sure you'll be able to. Do you think we'll get Gravis armor in the Space Marine 2? You think he'll put some Gravis armor on? needs a bit more cleanup than I imagined. So yeah, I think in the first day when I built the first one, I spent one day taking all of this flash off and uh, slippage and also filing it all down and then the second day I've, I spent constructing it and drilling for magnets and things and that's how I tackled this I didn't do any painting any not not really many sub assemblies um, Again, as always, I'll probably pop off at um, sort of 12 o'clock just to get a coffee. Still no mince pies. Still, uh, still waiting for them to appear. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point, Sebastian. Yeah, it is therapeutic. Yeah, it's little wins, isn't it? Little wins are always good for us. You know, and I think that's that's what's great about hobbying is every like piece that you kind of clean up or paint like that's a win and you know we all need more little wins in our life i think because it's very very easy just to you know forget people are very quick to forget that we're all winners already like we're here we're alive congrats you know you made it. So just enjoy it. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking like torch placement. A lamp placement it's going to go up here on the shelf and then it's going to be kind of at my eye level but face facing that way rather than this which is is obviously coming from from there so i'm always this part is always going to be in the shade whereas if i've got a lot lamp that's like facing there downwards then yeah it, it will make a, a night and day difference that was that was bad i know a light and day difference
Okay, that's that piece done. Uh, Super, have you ever played Payday 2? No, I haven't even played Payday 1. Um, I'm still trying to get through The Witcher at the moment. <laughs> uh, huge fan of the old Metal Marines. Uh, you did have 1,500 points of nids and had to sell them for rent money. Ooh. Imagine selling Warhammer to pay rent. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, and you're building towards something that in the end is really freaking cool. It's true, Sebastian. And also, it's, it's a thing that will be around for a long, long time. It, if you choose it to be, you know. If you want to sell it, you can sell it. But if you want to have it on your shelf or as part of your chapter or your legion, you know, it, it can last uh, many, many years. Um, try not to gouge too much uh, out of this assault ramp. Hello, Maxim. Good morning. How are you, sir? Nice to see you again. Uh, you look very organised in your build in the models. Do you keep the workspace one project at a time? Um, yeah, re re I mean, just for the past sort of 24 hours I have, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to put this Thunderhawk at a place where it will st stay. That will do, won't it? It's fine now. Um, yeah. Uh, for the past 24 hours I have, um, I very rarely have two projects going at once. So, yeah, and, and the thing about this is I'm building. I would like to be painting something at the same time and just go backwards and forwards to them. Um, but typically I'll have one, I'll have one or two projects on the table. Uh, but I recently reorganised this desk in this area uh, so that I could just commit to this, this one project. Um, Somewhere else in this room, I have got the Centaurian Marshal, which I'm trying to to build, uh, and also the Slaves to Darkness Chosen. Um, so they're the other two projects I'm doing right now. Um, in order in order of priority of how I prioritise them, I will prioritise the projects channel first so and it will usually be new releases so anything to do with uh, new unboxings or reviews they come first um, and then it will be my own things um, I'm trying to think of the last thing I built something sort of for myself uh, it was probably like a Horus Heresy, um, Rhino or, or Predator tank or something like that. Like I still haven't built the uh, Predator support tank. Um, it, I mean, it's a Rhino at the end of the day, let's face it. Uh, but I've got a number of those tanks now. And yeah, I, I really do need to, to build one and review it because I did review the, the normal Predator. Thing is, we've been, I say we've been spoiled. I know there's been a couple of dry periods. Uh, with Plastic Heresy this year, but on the whole, I think we have been spoiled. There's been a lot of decent um, miniatures. That was quite a long answer to your question. But... but I I really like it. I really like the question, so thank you. I, I do keep my head up and uh, read the chat now and again. Speaking of which, uh, this, these are a pain as well because you've got, um, it's not really slippage, it's just mould lines in in these holes and they are, yeah, they're a pain to, to get rid of. Uh, so let's pick a less painful <laughs> piece. Um, 
Uh, super, have you ever had a chance to buy the original metal? F no, no, I haven't, and I, I don't want to either. It's um, when I was a child, I, I saw the the Metal Thunderhawk, and I don't even think that I thought it was metal until like a friend said, and a friend said it came in the, um, you know, wooden wooden box and and things like that. Uh, no, it just is a pain. I know of other YouTubers that have been sent that for free and then sold it uh, and all the rest of it, but no, I'm, I'm not such one. Um, I just don't see the appeal at all. At all. Um, metal Dreadnoughts, on the other hand, yeah. Uh, I've got a few Metal Dreadnoughts, they're cool. Uh, but no, I, I'd much rather have one of these. This is my favourite model, you know, the instructions and the the parts are just fantastic and um, such a well-designed kit uh, as I say I could sit and build many of these <laughs> super starts a uh, Thunderhawk commission um, business that's all he does he just builds Thunderhawks for people um, flying bases not included <laughs> oh nice one nice one you're trying to build some orcs at the moment, got some killer cans. Uh, yeah, yeah, good, good. Um, uh, new heresy set. Oh, the new heresy set's still in the box. Oh, really? Wow. Well, I guess it depends on when you when you picked it up. Like, it did come out in June, didn't it? Um, I don't know whether you, you got it in June, but it's a good set. I just wish they had given us a full Contempt of Dreadnought. I mean, they gave us a full Land Raider, you know. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one, that Dreadnought, because if they had put both of the weapon sprues in, it, it wouldn't cost the the price that it does. It, it, they would have priced it up more. So, hmm. I'm just not a massive fan of Games Workshop selling so many different like upgrade sprues and frames and things because uh, they're full price for one you can't get them anywhere else uh, and, and two um, they're expensive they're like what 12 15 pound for a upgrade sprue weapon sprue which is more than you know maybe more than two resin weapons so you know you could it was cheaper back then to only get the weapons that you wanted uh, from Forge World uh, compared to, you know, Games Workshop's offering right now. Um, if you want to get two, two of the same weapon, because those sprues just have uh, one weapon each, don't they? One unique weapon each. Um... Yeah, I might I might release the Orc Mega Knobs review as a cheeky one um, before Christmas. Just to get them out of the way, because I've still got the Mega Knob box and I do like to have the box present in, in my reviews. I hope I'm sat sat closest close so that you can watch what I'm doing if you if you like to do that, I think I am. The chair is really, really nice. It's given me a lot more support than what I had, so I'm very grateful for that. Uh, how much was this? How much the Thunderhawk? Um, for me, it was free because uh, Kriegsman donated it to the channel. So thank, thank you, Kriegsman, again. Um, but if you were to buy it, I bought the first one. Uh, I think it's like 500 and I want to say 50. Let's have a little look for you. I don't know how many doll hairs it is. Uh, Thunderhawk. Uh, it's 549 pound. Okay, yeah. That's how much it is right now. Um... Just read a few more of your comments. Painting a Chaos Space Marine Saucer. I, I really do enjoy when uh, you guys put what you're working on. 
um, I think it's great uh, because then I uh, then if it's a model that I've built or had experience of, then I kind of understand a bit more of what you're what you're going through yourself with building or paint. Well, that's a painting with building the model that you you're talking about. Got to be so careful on this bit. This is this is a uh, it's a tricky part of the whole point. I might even use a knife for this bit because you don't want to be snapping part of a canopy off if you can if you can help it I might use a knife for the rest of this I'm not, I probably there's dust there so I I'm sure I s use the saw Hoover out later. Uh, is this Thunderhawk? Uh, is this Thunderhawk is an improvement over the first resin Thunderhawk? Uh, yes, Iron Bomb. Yes, it is, uh, my friend. Um, massive improvement. The first resin Thunderhawk was notoriously um, not very good. Uh, this one is all CAD designed, um, designed by the same guy that did uh, Mr. Underwood. So, um, I've met him in real life. He designed the, the Warlord Titan as well. Um, so it's so it's a lovely, lovely kit. Um, met him, bought it, uh, and, and met him. I bought it when I met him as well uh, and asked him loads of questions. Um, and yeah, I when I bought the first one, I wanted to support the, the awesome design and the, the refresh. I know some people on the internet were a little bit upset that it wasn't plastic, but that was before plastic Horus Heresy, so, you know. Whether we'll get a plastic one, I don't really know. I mean, if we do, it will be £300 minimum and also consist of a scary number of parts. Uh, however, it should be light enough to be supported on a flying stand should be um, they might have to make a new flying stand for it uh, so that is the you know and, and the the landing gear uh, might be interchangeable um, the s i said the x the attack foils the aerial uh, what are they called they're the 60 uh No, they're the 24. The attack wings um, might be easier to deploy and retract. Uh, they should do body part upgrades. <laughs> um, what is your favourite weapon in 40k out of all of the factions? Oh, that's a really... That's a really good question. There's, there's a number. There is a number of favourite weapons. Um... I, is it a named weapon? Because I do like the Apollonian spear and I do like the Emperor's sword, but like a, a normal weapon that's, I say normal weapon that's out and about. Uh, I mean, the bolter is good, you know, it's basically firing grenades that detonate um, inside the target and this turn enemies to paste uh, but I'd probably say the Adraphic weapons that custodies have 
Uh, they, they were banned. <laughs> the Emperor completely banned all Adrapic weapons, but he allowed <laughs> Custodes to keep them. Uh, yeah, and, and they just, they just, well, it's like the disintegration rifle that Mando has pretty much. They just disintegrate um, matter at a subatomic le level. I mean, it just, yeah. And it's painful, you know, very painful for for that split second or whatever. Um, yeah, I'll probably say that that's, I mean, the quake cannon is, is ridiculous. And then the Bellicosa volcano cannon as well. Um, they're pretty horrific uh, just because the... Uh, firing crystal matrixes that they use are infused by thousands of you know dead souls from a from a planet um that's been exterminatus or whatever you know it's it's like i like the kind of backstory and lore to to some of the weapons um and when it when it fires it's just you know, like screaming, like it will drive you mad, like the volcano cannon firing. Um, yeah, they're pretty, pretty horrific. Melter weapons. I was a big fan of melter weapons when I was a when I was a child. Um, kind of reminded me of like supercharged heat guns, really. Um, maybe because I read like Nightbringer or whatever. I think Uriel Ventris. I think his uh, Sergeant Pisanius uses a is it a flamer or a melter? I mean, it's probably a flamer, but um, I think in one of those someone uses a, a melter. And that's quite a nice description by Graham McNeil. Um, holding on to the boxes, that's a problem for me. Yeah, I only hold on to the boxes for, for reviewing because um, I like to, to keep the boxes in view for the review and, th and then I will just recycle them. Um, I used to keep... I used to flat pack the boxes and uh, keep them as like a paint guide and things. But then I realized that there's a thing called the internet nowadays where you can just kind of Google everything in terms of paint guides and on YouTube. And, you know, there's, there's enough content out there for you to be able to find the, the paints you need and what people have used to paint models. Um, And sometimes the instruction books are really, really uh, useful and they have the paint guides on them too. Um, like the Archeon one is, is fantastic. Um, I've kept hold of that one. Uh, yeah. Oh, I like your uh, profile picture, Marcus. Uh, I bought uh, an Imperial Fist Terminator Praetor and they took so long to ship, they sent you two packages. Uh, any tips on assembling them? Uh, you know the basics, so you know to wash them to begin with in warm soapy wo water for about three hours and then rinse them and brush them with a toothbrush um, to get all that releasing agent off you. Yes, you have to do that with the characters as well as these big kits. Um, then once they're dry, I would clip the gates off. Uh, there's only going to be a few of the gates on, on that model with a pair of 
Oh, wow, I actually threw that, didn't I? I, I yeeted that. Um, with a pair of old clippers, uh, I mean, you can use the your Tamiya ones or GW ones. They should be all right for, for that character. Um, you just don't want to damage the clippers, um, which I've seen happen with resin models. Uh, then do what I'm doing, which is cutting all of the connecting points uh, from the gates off. Um, then file them. So get rid of all the uh, slippage and mold lines and things. And then you are ready to glue with super glue. Don't use plastic glue, whatever you do. Um, super glue, I recommend. Uh, it's mainly Loctite and Gorilla Glue. Um, you can use Games Workshop's little um, sachets of super glue as well, but that that what they work all right. Um, but I try and use the Loctite with the brush, but I've also got um, this. Uh, Precision Max, which is doesn't rarely ever dry out and is very fluid, and you just got to be careful with application. Uh, but super glue with with a blush, br a blush, a brush is great. Just make sure you you um, brush the dust off uh, your resin models using like a plastic brush or something, um, because if you don't, then the resin dust will mix with the brush of the super glue. And clog it up after a while so they're my tips i don't think i've missed anything out there and then after all of that you can just spray it and paint it as normal you know like you would a, a plastic mini i knew this canopy would take me longer than i expected very hard pl um, plastic this though I think it's actually probably harder than the resin definitely prone to um, cutting myself by accident <laughs> with this uh, this piece fingers crossed that won't happen though but... Again, I don't know whether I filed this canopy down. It looks like I did. I missed a mold line there, look, you see. So even after all these years, if you go back to your models, you can still find, and I need to put some green stuff in that big hole. Um, maybe I didn't because I didn't want it to tarnish it before I painted the canopy, but. Um, other than Death Guard, what is your favourite Traitor Legion? Uh, word bearers, definitely. Uh, you know, they, they are the start of it all. Um, you know, their relentless pursuit of, uh, you know, the truth. Um, you know, uh, I really like uh, word bearers. And that's it, really. Those two are the main ones. Um, the, the other legion that I'm going to be collecting is, uh, um, Emperor's Children, so, the Volkite weapons, yeah, that would be good, uh, yeah, the bolt gun is very over the top, yeah, um, plasma weaponry, you know, you're firing like a, a miniature sun at an enemy and it's got the potential of um, overheating and blowing up in your face bit of an orc weapon that one no they go for maximum dacca don't they yeah I'm gonna miss uh, all these space marine in uh, in the new space marine game I 
I might replay it and stream it. That would be quite fun. See if I can do it in my voice. I've got a funny feeling this will need a bit more uh, work done to it. Uh, where is the front? This is how an orc would build a Thunderhawk, by the way. I'm just... Yeah. That's good, boss. <laughs> Something like that. That looks pretty, pretty, pretty cool, too. That does look pretty cool. Um, yeah, I hope so, Kriegsman. What, I mean, what are they playing at? They really need to up their game. Um, yeah. If they really, if they design and release another Titan before the different um, other weapon options for the current ones, well, it will just give me conniptions. It really will. It will make me write a tersely worded email. <laughs> um, morning, super. How cold is it where you are? It's it's two degrees apparently. Um, apparently. Yeah, it's it's not that cold here today. Um, warmer than it than it has been uh, for the past few days, so not too bad. But that's that seems really cold there. Um, I think you guys had um, snow and things. We we haven't had any snow in Norfolk uh, at all. Um, I've heard it was a bit chilly this morning on the roads, but other than that, uh, yeah. Winter is cold, water is wet, all that uh, good stuff. Uh, wonder why the Doredio Dreadnought has not been remade in plastic yet. I can tell you why, Alex, because I have not bought one yet. <laughs> they have a little list of people that buy, that buy things. <laughs> has Super bought a Doredio yet? Nope, right, well, we can't make it in plastic. Let's make it in plastic the day he buys one in resin. That's what they're doing, right? Secretly. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, I'd like to get one. It's, it's very high up on my list. Um, probably within my top five models to get next, uh, which is pretty high. Um, and I will most likely get the... Uh, Plasma one, 
because that plasma destroyer executioner is is disgusting um you know las cannons are las cannons they they look good in resin or plastic this this is another thing that i look at um, when i'm buying resin models is is what weapons actually look better in in resin than they do plastic or or can you tell and plasma the coils and things definitely look better in the in the old resin um, so what that means is if if and when they do release a plastic one, which they will, I'm sure they will, uh, you know, it's not going to be too bad if I get a plastic one um, with LAS cannons, for example. Um, if they do make a plastic one, uh, I wonder whether they'll only include two weapon options, because I think there's five. Let's count, guys. So LAS cannon, plasma... Auto cannon, uh, Volkite. Is there any others? There's a four. Why do I think there's a fifth one? Anyway, you have to stop me if there is a fifth one. Uh, but yeah, it, it'd be interesting to find out whether they'll have all of those weapon options in one kit. I don't think they will, because I think they they want to price it in between a leviathan and a, a normal contemptor uh, but yeah uh, what color do you paint the energy on plasma weapons whatever color i see fit and um, with chaos i'll go for like a, a gold orange gold or orange plasma with loyalist i'll go for either blue or green um i've got my one of my warhounds has got a um, green plasma, and the other warhound has got blue. For dark angels, I'll probably lean towards the blue for the interemptors that I have, and that will probably be the same case for all of them. I, I haven't decided yet. Maybe the Mark Six interemptors will have green. It's the old blue green plasma debate, isn't it? What's better? I think green plasma is a bit OG, and blue plasma is is the new new kid on the block. I think. When I think of a plasma pistol, though, I do think of it in blue now. But um. I think there is something wrong with me because I love Imperial Fist and Iron Warriors. No, 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 no. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with you at all. Um, there's nothing wrong with building sand castles and also wanting to uh, destroy them. And that's what it boils down to, right? It beats... I'd probably say it beats looking at yourself in the mirror all the time. Uh, that would be Emperor's Children. And maybe it beats being being a perfectionist all the time, like the Blood Angels. But that's actually quite useful. <laughs> um, beats being angry all the time. Uh, it beats hating all Xenos all the time. It beats wanting to tear off the flesh of your enemies all the time. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on, I, you know. If you can always do the, uh, the test on Games Workshop's community website where you, you answer the questions and it tells you what legion you personally would be or what you can pick. Um, Mine was Dark Angels, first time. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, so that sort of cemented my, my main legion. For Horus Heresy. It's quite convenient because most of my models are black. Well, technically they're grey, let's face it, but 
Uh, they should be black. That that's the same for like the knights and the titans and things. They're all black, black and gold. My poor little tummy. Next th next thing I'll ask when I go and buy a microphone is, does it have tummy noise suppressor on it? My tummy is making a few noises. I think it. Be I think it's because it's asking for a cup of coffee. Which I will get in the next 10 minutes. I'll have a little break at 12. Because then that's an hour and a half. Has it really been an hour and a half? The other thing I was thinking about is. If I, if I last this long. If I last to get to retirement age and things, would, would I still be doing this? Like, there's more chance of me doing this than playing video games, um, I think. Uh, you know, reaction times and things like that. I still would like to play video games when I retire, but... I look at people in their sort of 60s, 70s, um, hobbying and doing model railway and things, and their love and life and I'd like to do that for for this hobby too I think this this hobby for me is is for life I think um, and that's a really incredible thing when you find a, a hobby for life it's so easy to get distracted and you know pick up other hobbies and invest a lot in those hobbies and then you know all those things. We're going to attempt to clean this big boy up. Uh, let me just read a few more of your comments. Uh, what chapter of the Thunderhawks going to be painted up as? Uh, well, they're just going to be painted black. So then that gives me the option of having them as black consoles, dark angels, or raven guard. Raven guard, not so much. Um, I do have ten of the really awesome. Uh, Dark Talons are they? What are they called? Because um, I really like those those models uh, and having like five more Dathan popping out of these also looks looks fantastic. I don't have ten because they're all, dare I say it, monopose for um, resin miniatures. I, I wasn't that impressed with the more Dathan kit um, whereas the Dark Talons I really was. Like I did not hesitate to pick up a second box uh, very quickly. Uh, hello, newbie. How are you doing? Um, gluing that together will be nerve-wracking. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is not my first rodeo. Uh, I have one right here. Um, and it does go together very nicely, Iron Bomb. So I, I, think, I think we'll be fine. You're in good hands here. He says as he then <laughs> slips a blade, probably. <laughs> No. As far as I'm aware, this channel does not include bleeding over models. There are other channels, if that's your uh, if that's your thing. Um. Hello, the Raudij. Rudiger, Rudiger, uh, Horace Heresy or forty k, Horace Heresy, definitely, especially at, at the moment, yeah, definitely Horace Heresy, with everything that went off with Primaris and things, and how, the car, how cartoony the paint schemes are right now. I, I mean, I prefer Age of Sigma to to forty k at the moment. I, I would say Horace Heresy, Age of Sigma, um, forty k. If you asked me that probably seven or eight years ago, I would say 40k 
uh, Horus Her Heresy Warhammer. I don't know whether Age of Sigmar was out back then. Maybe. But Age of Sigmar has, has taken a bit of a um, fall for me. Just, just because of the Stormcast and the Auric War Clans with their little feet. I, I just can't get over the little the little legs. Like, sorry. I just... It's a personal thing. I just... It's a proportional thing as well. Like, people bang on about proportions of Space Marines compared to Primaris and things, but have you looked at the the Oryx? I mean, that's a, that's a bigger a bigger proportion debate. Um, but there's some there's some um, uh, Age of Sigma Warhammer models that just will always pass the test of time, and here is just one of them. This lovely lady here, um, my bay, uh, she's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean. This is why you get into Warhammer, Age of Sigmar. Um, two really good big reasons right here, staring at you. Um, one is, is a resin miniature, and two is the amount of detail. And I better put that model away before I get into trouble. Um, Uh, just painting the collection in mid sixties, labor of love. That that's my retirement, basically. Yeah. Um, super. What have you got planned for your retirement? Are you gonna go on cruises? Are you gonna explore Norfolk a bit more? Are you gonna spend time with your family? No, nope, I'm just gonna paint miniatures that I've collected over like fifty years or whatnot. Yeah. I won't be doing it all the time, but I'd like to make videos of it still. That would be cool. Um, have you thought about trying model railway? Uh, my, my father is into model railway, uh, and he builds tracks and tracks around, um, little outbuildings, things like that. And it's pretty cool. I have to say it's pretty cool. Maybe, maybe I will get into that, but it's, it's just, you know, man, it's just, it's just another hobby. It's just another thing to spend money on and another time sink um maybe i'll get interested in that a bit more uh, as i develop but at the moment um i guess i just like this so much because of the law and the hobby and i read a lot i read a lot of heresy books and uh age sigma novels and things so um for me i'm I'm exposing myself to a lot of content with the hobby. Uh, so much so that I'm, I'm sharing a lot of it with you guys, which I hope you, you enjoy. It's entertaining. Um... You'll be watching the assembly before you attempt yours. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 of course, of course. Um, after, just after a bit of advice, I have a resin model with a snapped thin piece, quite a clean break. Should I pin it and glue it or just glue it? Um, a thin piece, could you be more specific? Like if it's a sword, you'll be fine to, to glue it. And there might not be any wriggle room to um, to pin it anyway. Uh, super gluing it should be fine. I would actually say it's more fragile uh, trying to glue a snapped plastic sword than a resin one. Um, because obviously the resin one you can you can bend as well. But I've glued plastic swords back together that have snapped, uh, and they've been fine. Just just make a mental note though whenever you're moving the model around just to be pretty careful of, of that weaker structure point Uh, yeah. A 
it's just nice to have resin um, hull and fuselage. It's just nice. As opposed to like the Storm Eagle, which I have not yet built, by the way. Uh, so this is the rear. I think this is the rear. Uh, or is it the front? It's got to be where this where this goes, this chap goes. So it must be. Oh, that's a good rod to take off. Oh, calm down. I have cut myself more with these big pieces of resin than the smaller um, like character model resin and things like that. Don't know what it is about it, but I guess because you have to exert a fair bit of force. They are going to be last because they're, well, joint last. That's going to be a bit of pain too. Calm down, you. Just finish this piece and then I'll go grab a, a drink. It's important to like stand up every every hour or so. When you're hobbying. Glad I put this apron thing on because it's catching so many of the uh, shavings. It's just something that you might think about doing yourself. Unless you've got a hoover nearby. Or you've got one of those uh, resin eating pets or squigs. Or maybe just your floor is lava and it just uh, melts. That would add to the difficulty of building this model though, building it near a volcano. Difficulty out of 10. Hmm. I think someone asked me this similar question yesterday. Uh, I would probably say, uh, like in terms of hobby skills and things, maybe a six or a seven. Uh, 
I think that's down to the instructions. The instructions are very, very good. Uh, you know, you don't want a kit that's too difficult. Uh, but also you want a kit that is gives you value for money in the build build time. Because it's alright making a easy kit that costs six hundred pounds, but you know, where do you get your money's worth then? I mean, the Warlord Titan does come close to this kit. It's my second favourite kit to build. Uh, just because of all the options and things you can do with it afterwards. This, you, this, there's a few things you can do. Like you can detach the canopy, you can magnetise the, the assault lamp, um, you can, uh, move the heavy bolters you can move the attack foils you could magnetize the missiles if you really wanted to i didn't because well i just didn't uh, okay quite happy with that piece so i've got these to go we're getting there, we're getting there. I think we can finish this. Um, it's just these big old wings are, are huge and these wings do require a fair bit of work. Um, but these are, these are massive, aren't they? They are absolutely massive. Uh, but I'm hoping I've got one left and, and one right and they, they do weigh a ton. Stormbird ones though are on another level. room here aren't we if we're not careful right i'm just going to grab a cup of co coffee um, but i i will be back move all this onto here I mean, what I would be doing is, if, if I wasn't recording it, I'd have all of these parts um, put back in the box as I finish them. Um, but as you can see, I've, I've concentrated on all the smaller parts first, uh, only to then end up with the larger parts. It's just the way I do it. I mean, that might change for the Titan video, but... Where every piece complete is, a pe is one step closer. Um, and the next stage, when I come to file these using the mask and things, um, that that kind of methodology will will become more uh, prudent because that's like the the filing and going over some of the mold lines and things. Um, that is when those parts are fully finished, and the goal is to get all of the parts fully finished so we can then start dry fitting have the quick wins with the gluing of the engines and the wings and the, the hull. Um, the first thing we'll be attempting is actually the uh, front uh, ramp. And um, the front ramp, don't sweat it. Uh, you can always add magnets in um, after you've you built it, um, which, which is fine. I think that's, that's what I did uh, in the end. Um, And then you go through the rest of the hull and all of these um, and then eventually you put the wings on um, and one of the hardest bits will be getting the magnets right for these attack wings uh, it says attack wings can be moved in into either a stowed or attack position um but then they say don't glue it but if you don't glue it uh that's that's wrong they, they can't be um because when you put them in attack position they fall there's there's nothing to stop them keeping upright 
So if you want to keep them upright, you have to um, figure something out with magnets like I did. Uh, but everything else, like the landing gear and the missiles, um, are straightforward. Uh, what I did with the heavy bolters is I put a magnet underneath the ammunition uh, feeds. So, and then I put another magnet in the uh, heavy bolter wing uh, assembly area uh, so that you can just magnetize them. And what that means is instead of them being glued and, and they can only face one direction, you can actually spin them all the way around, which is quite cool. Um, anyway, uh, that's, that's coming up after we finish these one, two, three, four, like 12 parts uh, to go. Right, I'll just go get, grab a drink. I'm back in a second. I put BRB in here. I am back. Thank you for waiting, everyone. Let's climb back in here. Oh, and here we go. Yeah, I think it's important to have breaks. Every sort of hour or so, get a uh, drink, a bit of a bit of a walk. It's good for you. Okay. 
<coughs> right, sorry about that. So what piece is this? Like the underside, the intake? The air, yeah, intake for the um, center line ram jet <sighs> turbine, I don't know. Um, I did not have a biscuit. Thank you for, for uh, biscuit watch. Uh, I actually ate a banana, so uh, apologies. Um, uh, just keep my potassium levels up. Um, yeah, no, I I, uh, I have a little bit of mince pie withdrawal symptoms, so uh, I'm going to have to get some uh, for tomorrow's stream. Um, And there's my tummy protesting that it should have had a biscuit. Uh, <laughs> uh, greetings from across the pond. I'm new to the hobby, but what is mould slippage? Mould slippage is um, what you get with these Forge World resin kits. Um, these are made differently than uh, in injection moulding um, presses. Uh, in injection moulding presses, you get mould lines, um, which is just where the injection mould... Um, where there's like a little lip, I guess, around each of the parts uh, when they separate it. Um, you, you get mould slippage on resin parts because they, they hand make all of these parts. So you get the mould and you get this piece in the mould. And what happens is um, sometimes the piece itself moves ever so slightly in the mould. And, and that's where you get this line um, where uh, it's settled, but then it's moved a little bit and settled again. I hope that explains it. There's probably way better videos and explanations for that, but it's just part of the process. And you get it with you get it with every company. Like um what was it? Creature I wanna say creature comforts, but that's something else. Uh creature caster or whatever. And um, all resin companies you get um slippage and issue it's just part and parcel of this material. Um the, the plus side is you get way more kind of 3D detailing um, than you would get on plastic. I, I still am adamant that Amalia Novena is the best um, GW plastic uh, injection mold miniature that they've ever made. The, the amount of 3D detailing on that for plastic is, is insane. Um, for resin though, ju just pick any Primark really uh, if, if you want to see top top tier um, uh, detail um, the the amount of different details that they have just incredible anyway hope that answers the right question uh, <laughs> corpse starch oh no um, maybe I should have it like Imperium the themed um, yeah uh, I got a uh, a mug of recaf. Um, is that what they call it? Is it recaf? And this is heated uh, using the um, one of the pipes in the Warlord Titan. One of the. <laughs> so it's very hot. No, that coffee is not that hot. Yeah, recaf. Yeah. Uh, what do they call wine? Is it like, I want to say Amarillo, but it's not. What's wine in, in Warhammer? Am, Amizak? Am, Amizak? I can't remember. Something like that, isn't it? And then cigarettes are like low sticks or something. Yeah. Told you it's my favourite sort of universe. Uh, Am Amasek. Amasek, yeah, there you go. And then data states, basically iPads, right? <laughs> oh, you're just establishing a Vox link. Oh, you mean you're on the walkie talkie? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's I think it could be a bit of both, yeah. 
I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, in that universe, in that science fiction universe, we've there, there are billions of planets. I mean, that's hard just to just to comprehend anyway. But billions of planets stretched across the Imperium, and you know, the the like Terra, the Earth, wouldn't be able to exist without all of the its imports from all of the planets across the Imperium just would not be able to sustain itself. Um, yeah, so there probably are many, many different things to eat and drink and wildlife and all kinds of things uh, from those planets. And that's so great about that, that universe. <laughs> Whiskey on Fenris. Hmm. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind going to the like Fenris outdoors uh, shop or something. Do they? Ha do you think they have like a North Face, but a Wolf Face? I don't know. I don't know what they call it, but where you can get your your fur-lined boots and things from. The outdoor shop on Fenris. Maybe you could get your psychic hoods from um, Prospero. Oh, too soon. Or your sunscreen from Prospero. I don't know. Maybe get you your bio suits and face masks from uh, Bal. What's the planet called? Barbarus. I got it. I got it in the end. I got it. I think it's incredible that they just built a kind of factory ring around Mars. <laughs> it's just insane. Nope. We've uh, mined Mars enough and we've taken up all the space on Mars. I mean, it is it is smaller than the Earth, but still. So what we'll do is we'll build a, a ring around it. Um, so that makes kind of transport of goods and mining and things a bit more efficient. Of course it's efficient. It's, it's the Mechanicus, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the shipyard planet, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Already, you can see the colour difference in this finger from pushing on the blade, and you know, so just something to be mindful of. You would not get this on plastic. <clears throat> Thank you. 
and this is the thing with resin, like, you know, um, it's a big investment in things to make the injection molds and, and all the rest of it. But when it comes down to it, like, just how much more detail are you getting with these big, you know, square rectangular uh, Space Marine vehicles that you wouldn't get on plastic? I mean, the characters, I totally understand on the Primarchs, but look what they're doing with the <clears throat> with all the tanks and things and the dreadnoughts. I mean, I would say it's more likely that we get a plastic Thunderhawk than a uh, Warhound or any Titan. Just needs a bit of a clean up on that lip, I think. Okay, we nearly have a Thunderhawk down, Black Hawk down even. <laughs> so, just got a few pieces left to go now. We'll work these out and this fuselage and then we'll do the wings and then we'll finally do, do those pieces. And that might be us done for the day, really. Uh, every single miniature is one of your favourite for, for YouTube favourites. Thank you, Devon on air. That's really nice of you to say. Um, I will be making a video very soon, uh, like a, a, a unabridged version of my full collection, um, which will have all of the Age of Sigmar, Death Guard, Chaos, you name it, everything, um, kind of back-to-back -back in one video. Um, so <coughs> it'll start off with, I think it'll start off with the Space Marine stuff and Imperium stuff, and then it'll go through all the rest. But it'll just be one video, which might make it easier for people to view everything. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that, and it's so refreshing to, you know, for you for to not hear. Oh yeah, it's not painted, or yeah, it would look better painted. Well, yeah, thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> you know, I th I think it's just a a a um achievement just to have bought it all, let alone built it all. And I I could just be really really like anal about the whole thing and just spray it all put two more pe pieces of color on and then it's and then officially it's classed as as painted but nah <laughs> i don't want to do that you only need three three colors on a model and it's officially classed as painted so but i don't want to do that because then that opens up another argument of oh well it's not painted i was like oh well, yes, it is, according to tournament rules. Anyway, that's that's another thing. Um, no, that, that video I did in 2020. Um, 
Uh, but back then, I... Did I build the Warbringer? I did build the Warbringer in 2020, yeah. So that was in the video. Um, but that was before the second Warlord, uh, the Reavers, the Warhounds, the other Warbringer, all the Knights. Um, yeah, I, I, I completed all the Knights, didn't I? Uh, yeah, I'm still thinking about having the armages in two groups of three. I'd rather have armages in two groups of three than just pairs. There's something about armages, uh, you having one going out to scout and then the other two come to cover. Well, that's, that's how it was written anyway in the law. Warhounds? Yeah, you can have them in a pair. I know, Sampler, I know, I know. Uh, the top of the fuselage was bugging you since yesterday. Top of the fuselage. Yeah, 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 you do, you do notice more and more things, yeah. The top of your fuselage for what? What vehicle? What are you? What are you talking about, Kriegsman? Sorry, man. Uh, yeah, exactly, Devonair. And and the thing is, is I barely have enough time. It's, don't get your violins out, but I barely have enough time to um, build the new releases and make videos. You know, daily content. Let alone find any time to paint. And then you couple in that I don't really like painting, um, or should I say it's my least favourite. Uh, and then you also factor in that I don't display anything other than the Warlord. Everything else goes back in the boxes. So what am I going to do? Just paint the collection and then pack them all away. Okay. <laughs> you know, if I'm going to paint lots of things, I'd I'd like to show it. I'd like to have it out on display. Um, Either way, I can sleep easy at night. It's fine. And I'd rather bring out content uh, for everyone than, um, than spend a year painting and not release any content. I can't do both. I do all my own videos. I don't... Nobody does the videos for me or edits them or, you know, and I have a full-time job and a second job as, as well. So, you know, it's a lot of time, time constraints. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Flint. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you got them sprue hands. <laughs> Brew hands. <laughs> I have got this, not the, not the, the Warhammer hands. I don't know what is a Warhammer hand. I heard that recently. Someone called. Someone said something about. Oh, he's got Warhammer hands. I'm like, what does that? What does that even mean? That he likes physical hobbies. I, I don't know. Not really an insult, is it? I mean. He's, Strange, strange term. Uh, do you play Adeptus Titanicus or ever think of doing it? Yeah, I'd love to. What, full full size Adeptus Titanicus? <laughs> no. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a few models I need to still build for Adeptus Titanicus. And by a few, a um, uh, guy called Ed was very kind and he, he donated to the channel. Uh, last year, um, I think he's going to donate again. I'm not sure, but uh, he's donated kind of all of the Adeptus Titanicus little knights and things. 
um, to the channel. So you'll see some boxings and things of those. And I, I believe it or not, guys, I still haven't built the uh, the other War Master. It's very close to finishing it. Um, so that'll be around at, at some point. Most challenging build. Um, I read that question, Wilson, and I love the profile picture as well. Uh, oh, the back top section, join on the Thunderhawk. Oh, okay, cool. What, on your, on your Thunderhawk then, or? Okay. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, most challenging build you've done. Uh, the, the Reva. I mean, plastic wise, it's flayed ones because they are an absolute pain. Uh, Gene Steeler cult, Gene Steeler's uh, models themselves, just for the, the time it takes, because they've got four arms and each arm has loads of mold lines. It's just an old kit now and it bugs me, Gene Steeler uh, uh, kit. Um, but flayed ones are very f finicky. Uh, anything to do with Adeptus Mechanicus has lots of mold lines. Um, but resin wise, yeah, the Reva is, is a challenging one. Uh, especially if you get an old Reva with old weapons. The new weapons are oh, chef's kiss, but the old weapons are a bit of a joke. Um, and the whole model itself, you know, considering it's now what, 700, 800 pounds and you don't get these gorgeous CAD instructions or anything like that, it's, it's uh, yeah. Um, in terms of Titans, like if you're thinking about getting one, uh, really just save up for a Warlord. Like, honestly, if you, if you can only get one, just do that. Uh, even if it means you save up like a whole year, you know, you save up like a hundred pound a month or something, uh, it's worth the wait. Because if you're saving up for a year and you get it, um, you're then gonna, it's then gonna last your whole life. I mean, mine's lasted five or six years. So, and it's not going anywhere either. You know, they're not suddenly going to get rid of it. It sells very well. It sells better than Nemesis. My only wish is that they made a Lucius Pattern Warlord and a Chaos Warlord Titan. Where's our Chaos Warlord Titan, right? Um, you honestly assumed you liked them unpainted? I'm indifferent. I don't mind them painted or unpainted. Like, it doesn't bother me. Um, they're all going in the same boxes. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I think... For reviews, I'd much rather review, like, I'd much rather rather review this gorgeous bay um, than, than this Colossal Squig. Because the Colossal Squig is partly painted, it's not finished, it's only had one colour. Uh, but from a review standpoint, I'd rather it be not painted at all and review it than partially painted. But that's just my, you know... And, and I take ages painting as well. I'm just the slowest painter ever um, because I'm never happy. I'm never happy with, um, with what I've done. But. Uh, let me just read more of your comments. Uh, you were more surprised when you saw I had some painted models. <laughs> um, good. That's really good, Kriegsman. And um, I hope I've, I've enabled other hobbyists to, to take their time and you know, be patient with these big expensive kits because they are 
I mean, at the end of the day, the biggest question is, what is the rush? I mean, I mean, seriously, like, why do you? Yeah, there, there is absolutely no need to rush any of these big expensive models because you will have them for years. Um, you know, as I said yesterday, even if you've got a game this weekend, just don't take the Thunderhawk. Sp spend as long as it deserves, really. Um, especially if it's like a collector's piece and you don't plan on playing any games with it anyway. Because I think taking a Thunderhawk to like a local games workshop is a bit, a bit of a power move. But it's like, it's like, yep. I brought my thousand point army. It consists of this Thunderhawk and fifteen Space Marines. <laughs> Also, I've never used my Titans in, in a game. I've only ever used uh, a Warhound in a game. Um, and even then, is it is it fun? Like, deleting things off the board? I don't know. It's not fun for your opponent. I would always go for a game with a few small squads um, and have as much fun as possible. Try and have as much fun as possible. Then just take one big overbearing unit and absolutely crush your opponent, Conan style. Uh, Yeah, this is the thing, like, I probably could have painted a couple of armies in the time it took to paint the Warlord Titan, so there's also that. I mean, in the words of Gimli, that still counts as one, uh, but I don't know. Uh, I, think it, I think it counts more than one. I mean, how long? I did live streams of painting the Quake Cannon. And how long did that take? What, like three live streams? So about nine hours or so just to paint one weapon. And that's me being generous on the timing, I think, as well. This isn't as bad as I expected. This is not too bad. And the important thing is getting the door to fit. Put the door over here. Uh, you did Apocalypse game. That sounds good. Yeah, I mean, that's all right when you do an Apocalypse game and you've got like loads and loads of massive big miniatures and things. That sounds cool. Um, exactly, Sample. You can always paint them. Another one. Uh, you still want to do the 5x5 five five Titan match in the future. 5x5. Five, five. five Titans against five Titans. Um... What, are we both using the same Titans? What Titans are we using? Uh, 
Five by five. What? Two warlords and three reavers each? Or two warhounds, two reavers, and a warlord? That'd be cool. I'm actually quite close to that. Um, yeah. Gives me motivation to build the reavers. Jackie Weaver. <laughs> okay. You have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. Said the uh, warlord princeps. Or is it the uh, moderati? That's the princeps. Uh, if you do it, let us know. It goes. Oh, I'd film it definitely. Just put down five warlords. No, two is my limit. If they release a Psy Wall or Titan, I'll, I'll get Psy Wall or Titan, but that, that's it. If they release a Chaos Warlord, I'm all over that too. But You could have a Warmaster, two Warlords, two Nemesis, three Reavers, and four Warhounds. That, that would be... Oh, and like twenty something nights. That that'd be alright. Just told down to my local games workshop in Norwich and uh slap them on the table. I'm looking for an opponent. Now it's up to you if you want to like heat this. Uh, we we might do. Um, just to get the uh, tolerances a, a bit tighter, tight like a tiger. Um, just on the side there, there's a bit of a gap. And if there's one thing I know is that uh, Space Marines don't like a drafty Thunderhawk. So yeah, um, we might do that. But actually, probably white scars like a drafty thunderhawk. But uh, uh, two warhounds, two reavers, and a warlord. Yep, we could do that. Uh, I wonder if they haven't done a chaos one. Is because if you're at the hobby level to assemble and paint it, you can just convert it yourself. <sighs> no. Maybe. Mm, I don't know. I mean, like, they didn't take that philosophy for the Chaos, Warhound and Reaver, and yet they they made those. Uh, and the Imperium versions are just an absolute pain. Uh, and the Chaos versions, both of them are... But I see your point. Like, yeah, you, you've got to have a a bit of a, a hobby hobby level hobby skill level uh hobby craft no that's a actual company I'm trying to think of a good word to describe your hobby hobby level um because like for your skill at motorcycle riding and things and and it's usually called road craft that's your road craft resin craft ah i made it copyright i've copyrighted it that's it uh, resin craft depends at your what your level of resin craft is. Are you at Reaver? Like Reaver is the penultimate, then it's Warhound, then it's hybrid kits like Storm Eagle, um, things like that. Uh, Uh, two Warlords, two Warbringers, and a Reaver. 
Uh, I can shoot Krieg off the board in the first turn. Yeah, what I'm going to do, Sampler, don't tell Krieg, but I'm going to have the two Warlords equipped with four Quake Cannons. <laughs> and I'm going to have, and Missile Launchers, to get that 400 inch range. Um, or is it 300 now? They, bu they debuff it all the time, don't they? Uh, they nerf it. Um, and then I'm going to have both of the Warbringers with Quakes. And that's going to be my army. It, it's I call it the Quake Nipple. No, the <laughs> Quake Your Boots configuration. <laughs> uh, World Shatterer um, configuration. I don't know. I, I have to think of some cool names. It's just off the top of my head. Um, church. Yeah, we, we'd have to. Yeah, we'd have to have this game. In a church, Let's see if Lincoln Cathedral is uh, is available. Right. Oh, my finger is absolutely killing me now. Uh, going to church. Yeah. Oh, it would be cool playing in a church though, or a cathedral, because then you could have the organ playing. How gothic is that? I mean, that that would really Oh, it's like they could start playing as you're about to roll dice for a quake cannon hitting or something. <laughs> or they could play a little tune as one of the uh, big titans dies and goes apocalyptic. Oh, that would be so cool. I like how all I'm doing in these Thunderhawk um, build videos is just talking about titans. <laughs> Thanks, Kriegsman. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Oh. Then you could have the bells ring or one bell ring um, at the end of each turn. That would be that would be pretty epic. I think playing Warhammer in a church. Should we just do it? Should we should we just do it, guys? Let's um, take over the churches and just use them as um, tabletop wargaming venues. God, can you imagine that? That would really uh, upset the uh, the religious crowd because I think. I'm not speaking for all of them, but I think a few of them do do believe that some wargaming is is satanic. It's it's I mean, seriously, like that's what I've heard. Which isn't uh, which isn't ideal, is it? Uh, we're going to book St. Paul's Cathedral, really? I bet the acoustics are really nice in there, though. stretch oh dear yeah it's one of the reasons why i think i should get a a sixth um moirax uh just so i can run them in two two units of three which i think i can according to the book um we'll go through the rules today because i i am I, um, very aware that uh, I didn't do that yesterday, um, and I and I should have should have done. These big bits I I definitely sawed off, but that's the big mole slip there. It's on it's on the uh, 
connecting point, so it's not too bad, but. Uh, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, no, I, I agree, Sampler. I agree. Um, It's just something I heard um, many years ago, uh, which which surprised me. Uh, what is your view on our Iron Warriors? Um, yeah, they're all right. Um, I'm not going to collect them anytime soon. Uh, I think there needs to be more characters for them. I think there needs to be Praetors. I like their heads that they've they've recently had released for them. They're, they're really cool. I might even pick up those heads. Uh, just thinking, I haven't made a Forge World order for quite some time so I should should really um, they, they might be included in it the, the heads um, and this is the inside of Thunderbolt which probably you might not see ever um, but you've got the two rhino doors uh, you've got this that leads to the assault ramp and then you've got a set of stairs there and a set of stairs there. I, I don't honestly know how Space Marines can climb up those. They probably just leap from there to there, but... Um, it's the only way they really could have done it. I mean, I sort of understand there being a separate uh, hatchway thing there. You know, in case like the the um, the front of the Thunderhawk is is being absolutely peppered with all kinds of horrific weaponry, um, you know, you can just leave out this this um, entrance way, exit way, whatever. I mean, I know they're in power armor, but Balkans can. Get rid of power armor too, you know. This is quite a satisfying bit, really. Cutting these. Um... Flash parts out. It's turning, isn't it? You can magnetise these doors if you really, really wish. I don't, I just completely glue them. Like most doors on my tanks and things. Uh, do you plan on more aircraft for your chapter super? Yes, I do. Great question, Sampler, thank you. Um, I do uh, plan on more. 
Um, I, I was going to get a second Xiphon, but I'm very confident they're going to release a plastic one next year. Very, very confident. Um, sorry for this noise, guys. It's a bit upsetting. Maybe I'll just drill a hole in and then work from there. Maybe a couple of holes will do. Uh, yeah, so I was going to get another second Xiphon, but I might just bin that off. The plan is to get six Xiphons eventually. Um, so maybe I get another resin one, but in, in the grand scheme of things, I'd, I'd much prefer to get a Diredio um, before a second Xiphon um, in resin, then get the second Xiphon, uh, and then look at the plastic ones if they come out. Um, maybe get a Voss Pattern Lightning. Oh, that's, sorry guys, that's really... So at this point I need some kind of like Dremel uh, thing. But yeah, um, that is the plan. Uh, Avenger, um, Strikecraft, that would be cool. Uh, I've already got Stormbird, which is literally in my attic. Um, not doing anything. Horrific sound. Sorry, guys. Uh, you like the flying brick the Space Wolves have got? Uh, I got one for my 5th December. Sinter class celebrate. Oh, nice one. No, I'm not a big fan of that flyer at all. <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, how much of a sigh will there be for? Um, not really. I don't. I don't get that. I don't get why. I don't. Yeah. I should stop trying to find an explanation of why people think the way the way they they think, but. Um, so I'm not going to do that for you, Carl. I'm not. I'm not going to try and find a reason why you think that. Um, all I'll do is just explain that um, there won't be any sigh. There'll actually be uh, excitement because you know I've got plenty of resin miniatures, and they released a load of. Um, I don't know if you if you've seen it, Carl, but. They kind of released a lot of plastic Horus Heresy this year, including a load of tanks and things. And I, I got one or two comments similar to that back then of, oh yeah, you know, you've got resin Spartans and things like that, that, you know, what's your take on that? I'm like, well, that's great. I'm excited because it's another miniature that I can pick up and review. And it means I'll have more for the collection. And that's what that will mean if they ever do a plastic thunderhawk. If you know more than me, if you know more than all of us, Kyle, about when it's going to drop, please, please do, um, you know, tell us. But I'm 100% sure you don't have a clue <laughs> in terms of if one is coming, let alone when. Um, so it's so easy to say, oh, a plastic this is coming or a plastic that is coming without any proof because it's the internet and we, we can say things like that, you know. Um, at the start of the video, I went through, at the start of this live stream, I went through quite a lot of an explanation of um, how it's possible. But I also went through an explanation of the cost. Um, if people can't afford this one in resin, they're not going to afford the plastic one. That's the first part, point of the argument. The second point is, I built that resin one in two days. I don't think I'll be able to build a plastic one in two days. It will have... 300 parts minimum, because if it doesn't, you're ending up with a sprue that if you're, if you're only going to make this plastic piece, the sprue will have to be that big minimum 
and think how many you can get in a box. This thing has to ship. So that box would be huge. Um, so that's more cost for GW and all those kind of things. Um, then if we look at the point you're trying to make of, oh, if people have already got resin ones, will they buy plastic ones? They would take that into account. You know, um, they'd look at, they'd speak to Forge World, their own company, obviously, and they'd say, well, how many uh, Thunderhawks have we sold? Um, and they could say, oh, well, we've sold, um, you know, X amount or whatnot. Uh, and then they would say, right, well, out of those that you've sold, do you think you'll sell more or less or, you know, so they'll have all of these factors before they even think about, you know, designing one. Because um, they're a business at the end of the day. They want to make, they, they want to make money. So, but yeah, it's, um, but yeah, uh, exactly. You know, so the bottom line is if they decided to release a plastic one, I'd be all over that. Much like a plastic warhound, you know, um, the reason why I'd want a plastic warhound is because the resin one is an absolute pain to to put together, and it's so old. I think it came out in like two thousand and two, two thousand and three. So um, I'd want a res. Uh, I want a plastic one of those. Would I get a plastic warhound? Absolutely. Even though I've got multiple uh, resin ones, of course. You know. Um, but just because they've made a plastic Spartan, which I think is probably one of the most um, complex kits they could, they could have made uh, in plastic, um, well, of the Horus Heresy range at least. That and the Kratos maybe. Uh, you know, let's not forget they the Stomper is plastic, and that came out in two thousand and seven, I think. Um, you know, so it's possible, it is possible. Um, and I definitely want to pick them up if they were released, you know. But anyway, <laughs> I went off on a bit of a tangent there, but thank you for the question, Carl, that's, that's really good. Um, now you'd rather buy six Storm Ravens and make three Thunderhawks and spend 400 euros on one plastic uh, Thunderhawk. Yeah, that, well, that's fair enough, Sampler. You know, that's absolutely fair enough. Um, if you've got the if you've got the time and things, for for me, I I have not got that luxury. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do not have the luxury of buying multiple different kits and like kit bashing. Um, but that's that's my own um, sort of position, isn't it, uh, with timing and things. I don't have to do sort of daily content, um, but I choose to do that. I think I'm having more of an issue getting rid of this door panel um, because it's thick. It's far thicker than the other side. That's why I'm having an issue with it. <laughs> um, uh, we, yes, well, it's a Scorpius, but yeah, um, no, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's good that we've got it in plastic, um, Carl, because I, I'll tell you what, I was holding off getting one of those for so long. You know, I'd never had a Scorpius before and, and I kid you not, like a year or two ago, I was so going to buy like a Scorpius and then a few of the, um, Predator support tanks and things from Forge World and I'm glad I held off and didn't. There's some models like the Doredio, where if I bought a resin Doredio now and a plastic one comes out in 2023, I'd be like, that's fine. I really don't mind that. But there are some like the Scorpius and the Predator support tanks where, yeah, you're right. My my feelings would be, oh, you know, I wish I'd sort of hung on off of a little bit. Um, but the thing is, this Thunderhawk gunship is still like relatively new and it's a very well designed kit and it's one of my favorites um, to build. So if they did bring out one in plastic, yeah, it, it would be an upgrade in terms of uh, weight, 
and that's about it. It'd be a downgrade in some of the detail, it'd be a downgrade in time being built, it'd be a downgrade in mold lines, um, you know, yeah. In my eyes, there'd be more negatives, but I'm coming from a position of already having one. You know, And this is the thing, like, you know, and if they make any of the old resin kits, um, the beauty about these plastic ones, like the Rhino chassis and the Spartan chassis, um, and definitely the Sakaran chassis in plastic, is they've now got the um, sort of base plate to to branch out and build build upon those chassis and build other vehicles. Um, I would not be surprised if we get a... Uh, plastic um, or Typhon or Cerberus or something like that because uh, they they use the same Spartan chassis maybe I'm just um, yeah maybe maybe those things will happen I don't know but I would think that they would and I've completely blunted that one this resin does blunt your uh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely is. Yeah, definitely, guys. Oh, Typhon today. Oh. Well, I spoke too soon, didn't I? <laughs> Are they listening to the live stream at this point? I mean... <laughs> While you're listening, get get your weapons out. Come on, get your. That sounded wrong. You know what I mean. Get your uh, Warhound and Reaver resin weapons, Forge World and Games Workshop. Come on, while while we're doing requests, and a plastic Xiphon. If they're doing a plastic Typhon, they'll definitely do a plastic Typhon. I I'm sure of it. It's like I know they'll do a plastic Geradio because they've done plastic. Uh, Leviathan. Yes. I don't like to break plastic pieces off, but when I do. Just be careful not to saw all the way. This saw is like really, really good. Um, this Games Workshop saw. If you've if you're going to be building anything resin, it's worth having. Just to cut off the um, gates as well. It's another tool that I haven't really recommended up until now. Because I probably used it to get the gates off. Um... Will the door not fit at all with the flash tool? Oh yeah, there's no there's no question about that. Um, sampler, yeah, of course the door will fit. Uh, I think, but um, oh, super trying to find a door that's hidden under these pieces. Here. Right, uh, it's right here. Um, it will, but it's it's just not tight like a tiger. Whereas this side is. I won't be able to get it out, but luckily I can because I can finger it from the other side, um, as you do. Uh, so yeah, no, that will fit. See, that's that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for for that. <laughs> you were here when I said I'm a perfectionist, right? You you were you were present. <laughs> it's, it's been recorded. It's in the transcript. 
Okay, can you imagine if there's a transcript? I'd be in a lot of trouble. Okay. Uh, it's all Krieg's fault. Uh, you shouldn't have brought me this Sam, this uh, Thunderhawk. I know Sampler. I can't believe you bought this Thunderhawk for me. I can't believe it. Kriegsman bought me that one, and you bought me this one. Sure. The truth is out there. And Maxim, he he bought me this rogue idol with my own money. I mean, how how generous? How generous? <laughs> Thank you, Maxim. <laughs> um. How big is a Warhound compared to a Thunderhawk? Oh man, Stig. Stig, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to acquiesce your request here. And actually show you because it gives me a chance to uh, stand up. The real Saiyan, please stand up. And it also gives me a chance to show off a, a Warhound, which I'll happily do. Uh, so just give us a moment and... <laughs> Thanks, Maxim. Bear with me, guys. Uh, I'm just gonna get up, put a light on and then um, Bring down the warhound, which is just above me, really. Oh, bear with. I'm just gonna put a light on, and then I get the warhound down. Okay then, right. So here is uh, here's a dusty one I made earlier. You can thank Stig for for how dusty it is. Thanks, Stig. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that is the lighting is awful. Sorry, guys. Well, that's in terms of space. The Thunderhawk uh, takes a fair bit of space uh, compared to a Warhound. But that gives you an idea okay, of space. Yeah. Hope that helps, Dig. I'm pretty sure in my Thunderhawk review video though that I did compare it with with the uh, Warhound. But, right, you can go back up there. Very, very high. Yeah, and then we've got we've got them there at the moment next to the Reva. So yeah, and the Gash, which I have yet to review. And we've got cheeky little Titan Tech Freaks just just chilling out there. But yeah, anyway, that's what's going on up there. Okay, back to this. Love the old style Warhound. It looks like a 40k pound. Yeah, it does. What the Lucius pattern? Yeah, it's it's very cool. 
I like the Lucius um, Warlord as well. The Lucius Reaver looks all right. It reminds me of um, Mech Warrior uh, because I think the Apocalypse Missile Launcher is kind of angled like a diamond or something. Um, so that's kind of the only bit I like about the Lucius Reaver. Uh, I like the Lucius Warhammer, I like the Lucius uh, Warlord. Um, a soft wide wall paint and brush is needed for the dust skin. Maxim, that is... Uh, I think I've got a brush somewhere. Where did that brush go? I had a really big, thick brush somewhere. It's a good point. Ah, it's in a box. It's in a box. I know where it is. It's fine. Um, yeah, I um, wasn't planning on showing that all hand, so it's fine. I've yet to reorganise those top two shells a bit better. I will do that. Happy with my progress so far with them. Oh. I know why I'm suddenly very quiet. Thank you for letting me know. It's because the microphone went somewhere else. So thank you. Sorry, guys. Thank you for letting me know about that. Okay, we'll do one more piece after this and then that will be it for today but I will be back tomorrow and I'm planning on having a, a longer live stream tomorrow so uh, I may even do a double live stream I don't know no, no promises of, as of yet but There'll be a live stream on Saturday evening. I've made my decision up now. Um, but it probably won't be anything to do with this Thunderhawk. I'll be building the... Uh, it's your choice, guys. I can build the... Because you're watching now and you, you're avid watchers. Uh, it's your choice now whether I build the new... Gloomspike gets minis, green cracks, uh, or I build a Scorpius, which is kind of just a rhino with a different top weapon. It's up to you. I know that I won't finish a Scorpius in three hours, but the green cracks I will. Scorpius, you're saying, okay. Please do the Scorpius. 
Okay, yeah, all right, Kyle, thank you. Okay. I'll go for the Scorpius then. What I'll do is I'll probably build the turret first with the Scorpius and then build the Rhino chassis afterwards. Uh, you know, every, everybody's seen someone build a Rhino chassis by now. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks for the interaction. I guess you have spoken. Gonna have to go over these bits. A slight pain. I'll have to have a look at that Typhon then after I finish. Um, get some opinions on it. I'll probably give it to the Death Guard anyway. It just seems to suit their warfare. They're, them and Iron Warriors, but I don't collect Iron Warriors. I was going to give them the... Uh, Morbius too. I don't care, I'm just calling it Morbius from now on. Uh, another Land Raider. I think it's fine, Kriegsman. I think it's fine. You know, what have we had? We've had the Spartan, the Proteus, and the uh, Proteus Explorator. So now we get the, the Typhon. Uh, I'm re really hoping for the Achilles. I'm sure we'll get an Achilles. That's the one I'm, I'm most looking forward to. That and these rumoured different Sakarans. Maybe a Thunderfire cannon would be neat to see in plastic. Yeah, but that's well, that's 40k though, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that would be cool. They're not really all about releasing new plastic space marines, are they though? They're all about the, the Primaris, so hence why we got the uh, the Firestorm turret thing, whatever that's called. Um, oh yeah, Typhon's really cool. It's a shame that they nerfed the rules though. Uh, the, the Typhon, um, 
that had the original rules for the Typhon, the Dreadhammer Siege Cannon or whatever it was, uh, if it stayed stationary, it could fire at like 48 inch range. If it moved, it could fire at 24. Um, or if it stayed stationary, it could fire two at 24. Uh, but the rules were horrific. Okay, and I'll tell you why. I think it was a strength, I want to say like strength 10 or strength 12, um, but it was AP minus four and it ignored cover. So, and it was a, a big blast. So it could annihilate any Space Marines, even if they had kind of cover cover saves. Um, and for a time, people people took a lot of those. Yes, it was expensive, and 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 also it was never a Lord of War. Lord of War is a new thing for it. Uh, it was always just a heavy support choice. <laughs> because you know it's the same size as a Spartan, and a Spartan isn't a Lord of War, is it? So, yeah. Uh, kind of, Kyle. Yeah, there's like the uh, rapier batteries. That's the equivalent. You could have a look at the 30k rapier batteries and have one of those as a thunder fire cannon. I think there's a quad launcher as well um, for 30k. Lo load them up on uh, Forge World. I, I would be fine you proxying one of those as a thunder fire. They look way better. Um, it... It is a joke when before it was 48 inch range and it ignored cover, you know. Um, have it to be the same range as a little Vindicator. Yeah. It would be such a target as well. Don't get me started. P P <sighs> Sorry, but you've got a 10 man last cannon team firing at that thing. Yeah, it's not going to last very long. They would probably be cheaper as well. And they don't take up a um, Lord of War cho uh, choice. Hey, no worries, Ed. No worries. Glad to see you. How are you doing? I understand like the time uh, differences and things, so don't you worry. Uh, this live stream will be available afterwards in the live stream um, playlists. Uh, I'm doing this thing at the moment over these few days of Christmas where I'm live stream building this Thunderhawk um, that Kriegsman donated to the channel. Uh, so um, I'm doing it, I'm starting about 10, 10.30 every, every morning, just for a few hours, uh, so. Yeah, there'll be a Saturday evening live stream and it won't be this Thunderhawk. So tomorrow will be uh, another day of live streaming. But to compensate, I think I might do a couple of live streams tomorrow uh, to cover this Thunderhawk to at least get the uh, cleaning of the parts uh, complete. I think tomorrow will all be, be about uh, filing. Uh, yeah, you're very welcome, Ed. Uh, yeah, there's a possibility that they will uh, make the rapiers uh, in plastic, definitely. Um, they'd have to make new moulds for the uh, Iron Warriors, uh, some of the um, Iron Armour. Maybe they do a rapier battery with Mark 6s, that's a possibility. But I think we'll get them, I think we'll get rapiers in plastic. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I know that you've just made it to the stream, but I will be uh, finishing this stream uh, after I finish that piece. So in a little while.
Don't need that bit of sanding, fining. Oh yeah, no worries, Kriesman, no worries. Speak to you later. Have a good one. So I need to pop out in a bit. All right. So yeah, just looking at this is a fair bit more than I expected. Yeah, especially in there. Uh, did we say we do this bit? Yeah, that's going to take quite some time. Yeah, especially with the uh, sawing. I don't know, I think I've talked more today than I did yesterday that's possible. <laughs> Probably need to change that blade now though. Maybe even this one. Yeah, I don't know whether I can saw these parts off a bit better. Yeah, definitely need. Yeah, that one's a bit blunt now. I'm gonna change my blade soon, just for these final sort of few parts. Um, so tomorrow morning, the plan is to complete all of these. So we've only got. Uh, seven parts and a little bit of finishing up with this one and um, so i'll leave everything as it is uh, i might do some hobbying later though but that'll just be the centurion maybe um, and then we can start off by filing and finishing off the parts and making some quick wins with the uh, gluing as well uh, so make a good start on the filing tomorrow 
Um, maybe we'll return to it in the evening and either finish off the uh, either finish off the filing or um, or just carry on with it. And then I'll probably be back. Uh, well, I'll be back on Saturday evening for a different live stream. But then um, Monday I will be back. Uh, maybe Monday we can fully complete it. Uh, and then we're on to the, the Lego live streams, which should should happen like straight after these, really. But uh, yeah, thank you ever so much for, for joining me, everyone, today. I'm going to call it there now because I, I want to head off. But um, yeah, thank you for, for joining and uh, hopefully see you tomorrow morning um, about 10, 10 o'clock, 10.30. Uh, but thanks again. And um, yeah, hopefully your rest of your day goes well. And uh, yeah, see you guys soon. Uh, thanks again.